Hey friends, today we're going to talk about Grain Scanner. Grain Scanner is an incredible, incredible instrument. Um, it follows in the footsteps of Granulator. Maybe you're familiar with that, but it's a, it's a granular synthesizer that I feel like improves upon Granulator in some really significant ways. Um, I think if you're going to have a conversation about the future of synthesis, you have to talk about Granular. It's got to be part of that conversation. So let's check this out. Um, I've just dragged Grain Scanner in from my Max Instrument folder. After you install it, it's just a pack. So it comes with some different sounds, right? But, you know, the fun of, of granular synthesis right off the bat is using your own sounds. So fortunately, I've got my trusty Glock here, Glockenspiel. I'm such a nerd. <laughs> um, so I, I have a recording here of this Glockenspiel. It sounds like this. And I've dragged it into Grain Scanner. So the first thing that you should know is that you can select sections of the wave that you want to use. And now, I'm playing just the beginning right there. Okay, the first control here is duration, right? So duration is how long each individual grain is, right? So that's getting shorter and then this is getting longer. And right off the bat, uh, another th way that I feel like Grain Scanner has has improved the granular world is by this is basically a unison control where you're adding more and more. They call it layers, um, but you're just adding overlapping grain streams <laughs> is what the the thing says. So check this out. This is where I mean this is crazy. You can also destroy your computer this way if you'd like. Straight up Apex stuff right there. That is just so fun. So But we're gonna leave it around five layers just for the fun of it. Alright. Um so you can already start to tell this is just gonna be so much fun. Alright, so you can do a bunch of different stuff. You can add random uh variations on how many layers you have. So if I put this up to like 30. We're adding and taking away layers. So I'm just going to leave that right there. All right. So you can also uh, have the duration follow the key, right? So if I have this all the way up. As you can tell, the, the, the grains are getting longer as I play lower. But we're just going to leave this. I mean, this is a pretty powerful thing. We're going to leave this at zero for now. All right. So moving on to pitch, obviously, this is going to transpose the, the grain. And what I want you to listen to is the fact that these are such short grains. When you change the pitch, you get an entirely different kind of sound than if you were just to pitch down a wave, right? You're getting these layers, first of all, and they're kind of filling in that weird gap that you get when you detune something, right? So, so as I pitch this down, just listen to the... So, I mean, that's just so, so much fun, all right? And what's even more fun is that you have this... Um, random pitch variation uh, control called pitch split. So if I make this at a meaningful interval, if I just kind of do whatever, this is what we get. Right? But if I, if I put this at a meaningful interval, such as, you know, seven steps. That's pretty great. And maybe, I mean, even better, an octave so I can then play chords. Isn't that nice? It's picking randomly. Each new grain is either going to be at zero steps or 12 steps above the fundamental, right? Pretty rad. Okay, so let's just leave that. Hey, let's leave that. It's nice. Um, now the position, this is a percentage control. So this would be zero, right? The beginning of our selection and the end of our selection would be 100%. Um, so I can... Maybe this is starting to sound familiar to you, right? So I'm going to select this whole thing, and now I can... Now I can scan through. Now this is one way to scan. There's also a scan control that does it on its own. But, you know, I think this, this is a good way to move 
through the selection that you have, and you can modulate this, and we'll get into that later. Um, but you can also choose a random position, so every time you play... Notice how it's just randomly selecting different areas. Now, if you want this to be meaningful, there's not any audio information here, so I, if, I, if I move the median position to somewhere in the middle, then this is going to make more sense, right? I hope that this device is just a constant inspiration stream because it, it's just so it's just so great. All right. So now in the scan control, I'm going to put this back to zero. Okay. In the scan control, this control is going to be able to play through this selection that we have at different speeds. Right. So this is this is a speed control here. So if this is if this happens to be 100, if this is 100, then it will play through the audio at the original speed. And I should also say, if you want to audition what the different sounds are, there's this little play button up here, right? That's the original audio, okay? Um, so the, if I have it at times one, then 100% means it'll play at 100% the, the speed. But if I have it at times 10, check it out. So now it's scanning through the audio super fast. And it's also based on this direction. So this direction means if I have it this way, it's only going to play from left to right. It's going to yield more percussive results because the because uh, of the the way that the sound is played from left to right has a has a percussive intro, right? If I play it this way, there's going to be less percussiveness because every time it gets to the end, it's going to play everything back in reverse, right? So so a little bit less percussion, and then this last control makes it just scan once and hold the end. Now, why would that be important? Well, check this out. If I turn up the position, or I'm sorry, if I turn up the random position just a little bit. So I can get some variation at the end. So this is now my new sound. Right? It just, it adds a layer of complexity to it. So at this point, I'm just going to leave this in the middle. We're going to leave the scan where it is. And let's talk about some of this other stuff. This is really fun. We have a reverse grain. So this is the percentage chance that the grain that's going to play is going to be forward or reversed, right? So... How cool is that? So half the grains are reversed. But if it's 100%, they're all going to be reversed. Pretty rad. So now the chance. This is whether the grains will play at all. So this is, see, okay, so this is where we're, we're getting into the kind of thing that Anthony loves. I love probability. So now there's only a 50% chance that the grain will even play. And there's a 50% chance that it will be reversed. So now we have this. We're getting random complexity now. How fun is that? Just so awesome. Now, to, to, to add to that we can add random panning. You already know what this is going to do. And we have random uh, variation on the uh, on the amplitude. So now we can just get different... There's just so much power here. It's incredible. All right. So now the, the final thing is yet another way that they've improved upon granulator is now we have a grain window section that isn't just shrinking or enlarging the grain. I mean, that's essentially what this is. What a grain window, I should, I should explain what a grain window is. It is essentially the envelope of each individual grain, right? So it starts from low. In this case, it goes up high and goes back low, right? So it goes, well, right? This is each individual grain, okay? This is not the global envelope of the instrument that we're building. This is each individual grain. So I can go in here and choose any of these algorithms, and some of them some of them have extra controls. So, so now this is a very a, a much shorter window, right? So, and I can dynamically increase. So I really like that in this case. That kind of sounds great. So you can just kind of experiment with these little, with these different window functions. Here's one that's kind of like a ramp, you know? So
So I'm going to stick with this kind of trapezoid sound. That kind of sounds nice. Okay. So the, let's move on to envelope. So now you can see that this is an overall envelope for the entire instrument, okay? This is going to be meaningful in some ways, depending upon the instrument that you build, right? In this case, this is kind of more of a pad. So I'm going to open the attack up a little bit, and I'm going to open the release up a little bit, right? So maybe like three seconds. So now... See how it fades out there? Pretty sweet. <laughs> All right, so that's an envelope, self-explanatory. The next section is a filter. This is really cool. Um, the filter is always on. It has a dry-wet control, though. Okay, so something that we can do, let's just say this filter, you know, in my opinion, there's a little bit of brilliance in this that might be over the top, like some of these high-pitched notes, right? That might be over the top. So I can roll in some of this filtering. Now it's 100%, so if I pull this down, right, I can filter out some of those highs. Now this is a morphing filter, so what's cool about this is, you know, I can, change what kind of filter it is but slowly and I can do it in a in nicely interpolated way right so gotta put that dry wet all the way up so you can hear so that's just the highs right there's the mids and the lows so it it sweeps from low pass to band pass to high pass right now this the sound that I'm making it might not be it might not need filtering, right? This isn't necessarily like the kind of material I'm working with, but you know, obviously if you're designing a bass sound, or you're designing something else, it might make more sense. You can also change the slope, and what this is gonna do is this is gonna, this is more extreme filtering, less extreme, right? If you add resonance, obviously you get more of a exaggerated effect, right? Okay, so that is the filter. I'm actually just gonna turn it off. Well, I'm gonna turn it about halfway. Why not? Now moving on, this is really awesome. The distortion algorithm they decided to put on here is really cool. It has a saturator and an exciter mode. So what's cool about the saturator is that everything below the split frequency gets distorted, right? So you could think of it as like fattening up the sound, right? Now, everything above it though, if you turn it on exciter mode, everything above it gets distorted so you get more brilliance. Right. In this case, I don't necessarily need more brilliance on the top. I kind of want to fatten the sound up at the bottom. So you hear those like low clicks. Now you can hear those a little bit better. Before, now, right. So I got more clicks. Okay. And as you can tell, there was already a tiny bit of reverb on here. They have just a little bit already sent, but you know, this is the reverb algorithm. Sounds pretty good. Right? So those are the those are the effects that you get on board with grain scanner. And I should say, you know, with any instrument, you can you can use these effects on here. You can also make entire huge long chains of effects in in traditional Ableton style. And there you go. You know what I mean? You can you can build this into a huge instrument rack and do all this other stuff. The advantage of having these effects inside of grain scanner, I'm about to show you. And that's and, and pretty much with any control, that's here in the matrix section. So this is where you should probably be like, what? Yeah, uh, essentially now you have all of these destinations, okay, that you can modulate, right? This is where things just get so crazy. So in the, the matrix section, this is where you assign your mods, okay? Now the mods themselves, though, are here. And as... At, as default, they're not doing anything, okay? I need to turn them on, right? So let's just do a classic sign LFO, all right? So now this is just a, a, a sign LFO, all right? And we're going to, you can increase or decrease the speed, right? I'm gonna increase it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the matrix and now we're gonna assign this somewhere, right? This is just, all it's doing is, it's just a free running wee thing, right? So now we're gonna go to pitch, okay? Mod one. 
And now you can see the LFO moving. See it over here? One, two, three, four. These are your different mods, right? I can now add a small amount of vibrato. It's really easy to go overboard here. I'm going to go to like 30. I'm actually going to slow it down just a little bit. Sounds awesome. Sounds drunk. I'm going to do just a little bit less. Now, you might be asking, what is this global control? Well, let me demonstrate. I'm going to slow this down a lot so we can really hear what's going on. So, at this point... So, you hear how the pitch is... Right? Any note that I play, it's doing that. Right? If I turn off global, though, and now it's local, what this means is that every voice that I play is going to have a different instance of this same LFO, and it's not going to be synced to itself. So instead of all the voices moving up and down together, now when I play them, they're all going to move separately. Now, obviously, you're, there's going to be a, an extreme CPU tax to doing things like that. Um, but in this case, let's just pull it back to where we were before. All right. So now let's do maybe some more meaningful um, modulations, and we're going to sync this uh, so I get kind of dividends of time here. And we're going to add a sample and hold. Okay. So now this sample and hold is just kind of moving through. Let's speed it up a little bit. Let's go to one eighth. Yeah. Now this is mod two. So let's go back to the matrix. Now you can see it's just moving around, right? So let's go to um, duration. All right. So now we can go back to duration and we can see that we have 298 milliseconds. If we go to the matrix and add this, now we're going to change the duration of this by 50%. So let's just go ahead and try a different sound and try a completely different approach with this thing, okay? So I'm just going to delete this one and bring in a new grain scanner. And so this time I'm going to try a different sound. So I'm going to drag this into here. Now, I'm going to select this section, okay? Right? And so instead of using the scan controls and all this stuff, I'm going to modulate the position. Let's go ahead and just make it a little bit shorter between these two, yeah. Okay, and we're going to go directly into the matrix, all right? And we're going to choose the step control. So now this is really fun. We can make a sequence of different moves that we can then assign to things, right? So, so I've just got it kind of running at half the speed that we're at. Okay, and now I can go into the matrix and I can assign this to whatever I want. And so in this case, I'm going to assign it to the position. Okay, so we're going to go find position and we're going to assign it to number one. Now check it out. Now isn't that cool, right? So let's change, change the window maybe. And maybe we'll add some layers. We'll make the duration a little bit shorter. And there's some weird stuff going up on the top, so I'm going to add a little bit of filtering. And we're going to excite the top now. Okay. And so you can put anything in here, right? Um, you know, let's just record my voice. 
I've had a cold, so... I have a deep and jazzy voice. I have a deep and... So now I can just take this audio, right? Anything you want. Drag it in there, right? And now I can... <laughs> yeah, so essentially endless fun with Grain Scanner. Um, you can make so many different sounds. Just go get it. There's just no reason not to have this in the future of... In, the, in, our, in our bright and wonderful new future that we have here with these amazing instruments that keep uh, coming out. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Like, comment, subscribe if you feel like it. Love you all so much. Thanks for watching. Bye.